welcome to a rabbit hole. Now, I know we were going to do the shock tower reinforcement, and I know it's been a long time coming, and we've gone into a bunch of other rabbit holes uh, in the meantime, and this is kind of no different. So bear with me. Um, this all is part of a master plan, uh, even if it's going to take us a few detours to get to, uh, to get to there. So uh, well, what are we doing today? Well, in order to kind of figure out how to route the cage tubes that will connect the cage uh, to the shock towers, um, I wanted to kind of create a little bit of space and kind of figure out like how can we route it and also create some working space. Um, we're going to need to uh, cut into the body shell at least some holes to, through the firewall um, and uh, we want some space uh, for the weld gun, for the angle grinder, that sort of thing. And so what I've done is, the first thing that I've done is taken the pedal box and the steering column out as you can see. Um, and then the next thing that I did was I sawed the original dash rail um, out on the left and the right. So this thing can now come out. Okay, that is already a lot of space and we can really work very well in, in that corner now uh, without any kind of uh, uh, pedal box or steering column or, or the original dash bar getting in the way. Now there were some things mounted to the original dash bar, such as the ECU on this side. And you can, as, as, as undoubtedly you've already noticed probably, the um, steering column was mounted. Uh, it was sort of sandwiched between the st steering column and the steering column holder. So we'll have to address that. Um, but uh, while I was kind of in here, I noticed something else that I didn't quite like. Now, um, as you can see, this is where the pedal box uh, for the brake pedal will mount and the uh, brake booster uh, where you know this is the master cylinder side this is the this is the firewall side will slot into those holes from the engine bay and the pedal box will mount to those studs just like that yeah Pretty simple. And in between, sandwiched in between, is the firewall. Now, not quite, because what, what's also sandwiched in between is these washers. These washers were led into the sound deadening. These are about a quarter inch or seven millimeters. And they were led into the sound deadening. And that way, basically, uh, GM could space the pedal cluster um, away from the firewall by that quarter inch to really wrap around the the sound deadening all the way um, including behind the pedal cluster well that's that's pretty tricky um, and 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 you've got to hand it to them uh, but they what they did is they basically in order to transmit the braking force and give the pedal cluster um, actually something to press against rather than just compressing the um, uh, the sound deadening is they, they had these washers let in. But now what that means is that there's, there's two problems with that. The first problem is you uh, have to kind of, when you put this back together, you have to align the brake booster from this side, the pedal cluster from that side, and in between you have to shove these. Now that's, that's really tedious, and that's really not, not a great solution. Not something I would ever want on a race car, to be honest. I want to make it easy to take apart, put it back together very quickly at the track with basic tools. That's always kind of my standard. The other thing is that um, all of your braking force is going through these washers, right? The firewall is just a piece of 20 gauge, so like one millimeter sheet steel, right? And so th that means that basically all of our braking force is going through these. Now, why is that a problem? It's not a problem in a road car, but in a race car, race cars on track, you brake very differently from uh, the, the street. On the street, you will occasionally touch the brake, not very hard, and the amount of panic braking that happens is so rare, it's never going to fatigue the, the sheet metal in the firewall. Um, in a race car or, or a dedicated track car, 
it's kind of the opposite. You almost never lightly touch the brake. Uh, what you're doing is you're accelerating hard into the next corner, you're full on the brakes. If you're not using the brakes fully, well, you're leaving some time on the table, right? And um, even, even if you're racing at seven tenths, which, which is what we do ostensibly in Lemons, um, you're going to put a lot more force through these washers more often, really all the time, every corner, every lap, every race. So that's really not something that I like. So what I would like to do is I would like to replace these washers with something that is larger. Ideally, it covers the entire back area of this uh, pedal cluster, has the, the same thickness as these washers, um, and bolts to this pedal cluster so that uh, we can have a, we have a much easier time assembling things. Now you might be asking, why even bother with it? Why not just simply bolt these things together? Don't worry about the washers. They were clearly just there for the for, to space the sound deadening. And normally I'd agree with you. Unfortunately, um, the way the geometry works is they there's this top bracket that connects to this bolt right here of the pedal cluster, and I've tried it, it just doesn't line up. The other thing that it obviously would do is it would space the brake pedal, or at least the hinge a quarter of an inch further forward. And I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but it is messing with the geometry that we at this point know and like. And um, there is only so much adjustment um, on this guy. And so really in order to um, kind of preserve the original geometry and give us a little bit of reinforcement strength around that already pretty weak area in the firewall, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, go get us uh, some scrap aluminum that's about the same thickness and build a uh, spreader plate for this. Pretty good place for a press conference now. Well, it may sound like a, uh, an adult bookstore, but this is actually a metal place. And uh, I got my pattern, I got some calipers, and uh, let's see if we can find some scrap aluminum. over so I can even mess up. Looks like the right thickness. Yeah, perfect. To start, we clamp the pedal cluster to the piece of aluminum and mark the exterior outline of the holes with a sharpie. The exact exterior outline isn't super important. We'll just use it as a rough guide for the overall size of the piece. With that determined, we can use the bandsaw to trim the excess material off. The drill press makes easy work of the holes. I love drilling into aluminum. It's so much easier than drilling into steel, and it produces these really satisfying long curly strings of aluminum. Next we use a step drill bit to successively embiggen the center hole. Up to a certain diameter I find the step drill bit is the tool of choice and produces more accurate circles than a hole saw. After that we ought to have a look at some clearance issues. We need to make sure the spreader plate doesn't interfere with the opening for the steering column here. Note how there is a stamped ridge in the firewall around that opening. We want the plate to sit flat against the firewall so we need to do something about that. Now we could just clearance that part of the plate generously. Or we just ask our buddy with a mill to relieve that corner of 1.5 millimeters of depth because it's funner. Then it's back to the bandsaw, this time in table configuration, for trimming the overall shape. In order to clear the steering column opening, a generously rounded corner is enough. And for no good reason other than it looks nice, I'll just replicate that on the other corners and call it a day. It's remarkable how easy it is to cut even thick pieces of aluminum into shape on the bandsaw, so long as you're cutting convex and not concave shapes. The circular grinder perfects the rounded corners and smoothens the edges. I know it doesn't matter and nobody will ever see this thing, but I just had to. Next we'll bolt the pedal cluster to the spreader plate where the brake booster studs would normally go. 
everything lines up nicely, which is a relief. The next task is to make the piece attached to the pedal cluster permanently for easier assembly. For that, we mark two easily accessible holes, drill them out to a small diameter, and cut some threads into them with an M5 tap. I love how easy all of this is with aluminum. Back on the bench, we can put the pedal cluster and spreader plate together with some M5 screws. They just need to be short enough so that they don't poke out on the firewall side. All right, moment of truth. We've got our pedal cluster and the spreader plate is bolted to it. Let's see if it fits. I'm gonna take the top bolt off here, slide it onto the remaining stud. It's on the, well, where it would normally be a clutch side. And we'll put the top bolt back in. And, uh, and it goes in, that's great. That means we've nailed the alignment. All the holes line up. Wonderful, I'm very pleased. Now the one remaining thing is, now that we've got the pedal cluster reinforced and back in the old place and the lining, we need to do the same thing with the steering column. You'll recall we removed the stock dash rail that was sandwiched in here and took about 20 millimeters or three quarters of an inch out. Well, all you need is a buddy with a lathe, thank you Pete, uh, and uh, some spacers will turn up. Uh -huh. And there you go. So we'll put these in when we put the steering column back in. I think that's it. Uh, I'm very happy. <clears throat> we made some space uh, for us to work in. We made a bunch of improvements. We added a bit of lightness, uh, never mind all the heaviness that we're gonna add later on. And um, uh, we made some improvements along the way, both in terms of maintainability and in terms of strength. Uh, that's really what it's all about and what I enjoy about this process. I bet we're gonna get to the cage reinforcements into the shock towers next time. Maybe. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching this video about the Bitter Lemon and remember to subscribe our channel.